Hi, welcome to the Powder Jet Build Your Own Workshop online. Powder Jet Blink. You probably ordered one from our shop, and now you're wondering how the heck do I build this thing? So we're here to demystify and we're going to go step by step right through the process of building a snowboard. And it's going to be super fun. The first things we gotta pay attention to is safety. So what I always recommend is uh, dust mask is hugely important. There's like fiberglass floating around. When we cut into it, there'll be fiberglass, which is in the uh, construction of the board. So we'll be basically uh, you know sending dust everywhere. So this is super important. Earmuffs are super important. This is loud, and you gotta protect those ears you got. And I always wear leather gloves or vinyl uh, gloves. The edges are really sharp, so the leather is good for protecting you from the, you know, all this shrapnel. So let's talk about the construction of your powder jet blank before we get started. These are all poplar, laminated 16th inch pieces of poplar. There are four layers of poplar. There are also two layers of 19 ounce biaxial fiberglass and there are stainless steel edges and PTEX. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually start cutting into the board, cutting out the board. The tool we use for that is a jigsaw. This is a Bosch jigsaw. Uh, the, I found that the best blade for it is a uh, hardwood blade, believe it or not. Um, the material that we're cutting through is incredibly hard. The epoxy, the fiberglass, and the wood mixed together, pressed in the snowboard press, make for a really dense material. The jigsaw the teeth cut on the up swing. It just goes up and down. So it's a pretty safe tool. It just goes up and down. The only way you can hurt yourself is by cutting into your hand like this, which is you are not going to do. Realistically. But be careful. But it cuts on the up cut. So this is why it's really good to have safety goggles on because things do fly straight up at your face as you're cutting. So be smart. So our first step is going to be to cut out, starting from the tail, along the edge, To the notch in the nose, and we're going to end it right here. Okay, so now we've cut out the, along the edges, and what we're looking at is something like a snowboard shaped kind of thing. Uh, 
Now we're going to flip it over. We're going to do some measuring on the top. And we're really going to start getting our design together. Okay, now that we have the sides cut out and we're close up to the edges here, now we're going to start measuring and getting our board shape dialed in. This is a fun part. So what we're going to need is several measuring instruments. And step A is going to be measuring between the inserts on the snowboard and getting a center line set up. So step one is measuring between the inserts. They are four centimeters apart. So I'm going to just line this up as best I can right here. And we're gonna make a little wee hash mark at 20 millimeters. And that's the center. So we're gonna do the same on our rear insert pattern, marking at 20 millimeters. Okay, so then we're going to connect those arrows and we're gonna get a center line, the length of our board so that we can line things up. Nice light line. I use a, a pretty thin um, measuring stick for this part because I really want to bend it right into the bend of the nose and tail. It really needs to bend into it, otherwise you'll end up with a weird line. So it really wants to bend right like that. Um, so I like to do one up near the nose, about where the notch is. It doesn't have to be right on the notch, but right near it and just line it up on your center line and we're just making a perpendicular line like such and uh, we'll do one on the tail too you can just pick a spot it doesn't have to be any spot, you're just going to have something to measure from this way. So the main thing you want to think about when you're laying out your nose and tail shape is you need to be on the nose forward of the curve, this part, the contact point where the board starts to bend up, you need to be forward of that starts to lift up right about in here. So I would never want to cut back the, the edge any further than that or else it's going to dig into the snow and you're going to face plant. So you want to stay ahead of the curvy up part here when you lay out your nose shape. Same on the tail. Exactly the same concept. Back here you can see here if I lay put this on really be able to see where it starts to curve up. So you would never want to cut the tail back this far. That would be stupid. Do it back here where it's lifted up off the snow and then you can cut anything you want. So we have selected a couple of uh, designs from our website. These are uh, just shapes that we've made lots of them before. You can see this template has been used multiple times. Same with this. Um, so these are the ones that we're going to use for examples for our board that we're building today. So we will start by uh, aligning the nose and so you can do whatever you want up here. Uh, you may, you know, depending on the shape, the, uh, the template that you choose, it may take a little bit of, you know, shifting around and everything to get it lined up correctly on the center line. 
Uh, sometimes the shape that you chose is like too narrow and you'll have to kind of give it a little pivot, like center the nose on the, on the line here and then give it a little bit of a pivot. A little twisty like that. Um, sometimes it works out perfectly that it just lines up correctly. We have perfect little line up here. So we are going to go with that. Uh, I'll use a little masking tape and just stick it to the surface and then we'll trace around it. Okay, so we got that taped on there. And I'll just take my pencil and I do like a little shading technique. I like it to uh, have a nice firm line, like a nice strong line here. You know, it's also, uh, this is paper, so it's kind of a funky template, like you can, it's really easy to like slip underneath and then you have a, a line like this underneath, which is not what you want. So, uh, if you are kind of doing hash marks like this, that's a good way to do it too. Because then you end up with this cool, uh, kind of a negative space version of a line here. And when we're cutting the boards, nose and tail out, it's a good idea to give yourself a little extra room here. Like you don't, you wouldn't want to cut right to the ragged edge of what your line is. Give yourself some room to cut around it. We'll get to that step next, but. So in the back here, uh, like I said before, we're gonna make sure that the curve part here happens behind where the board starts to swoop up for the tail here. Now, we wanted to make a board around a 158 in length. So let's do a little measuring and make sure that our board comes in somewhere around that. So right back here is a 158. That's 158 centimeters from our pointy nose. So that is the furthest back we would want to cut this baby. So let me just do a quick little uh, reference mark with my square at the 158 length. Personally, I don't mind if it gets a little shorter than that. Especially out here on the East Coast, we tend to ride a shorter board because the woods are tight and the snow is often pretty heavy. So I'm just going to do the same thing here, lining up my center line on my template here. A little hunk of tape. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same shading technique here. Okay, that's our tail shape. Okay, so now we're going to cut out our nose and tail. This is an exciting part. Okay, so like I was saying, up here on the nose, we're going to cut a little bit further out than the, uh, the line. 
A lot of the shaping of your snowboard is going to come using a belt sander. This is just giving us a good rough estimate, good rough shape, and then we'll sand back to it. That way we're not taking off too much material and you know possibly messing up. So let's just give ourselves a nice wide cut here. You can actually see right here, uh, I cut a little bit close to the line. That's what I was like, kind of, uh, so yeah, I cut a little close to the line there. I consider myself a master powder jet builder, and even I make a mistake like that every once in a while. So keep your wits about you as you're cutting out along the edge of your nose and tail. For our next step, we need to bust out the Dremel tool, which is a little rotary cutter. It's, it's a very adaptable little tool, and it's good for a lot of different things. Uh, right now I have on it a little sander wheel, but I'm going to put this cutting wheel on it instead. Because we're going to need to cut through the steel edge on the tail in order to make our shape. Pretty simple procedure here. I think anybody can handle it. I give it a little push in like that before I pop it out. And then we'll just pop in the cutting wheel. Alright, so I like to use the more expensive, thinner, curved, uh, uh, abrasive wheel. What we're going to do is we're going to cut through the wood and the steel. Give it some room back further away from where your board is eventually going to be. With the belt sander, we can take off some material there. So we can give ourselves a little bit of room. Again, you don't want to cut too far over, messing up your design. So this part's a little funky. Definitely, definitely need safety glasses for this part because sparks are going to fly. Uh, you don't want to heat up the metal too much, so we'll take our time cutting through, letting it cool down, and then cut again. The wood kind of gives you a, um, a little track to follow. I like to follow the same angle as what the board's going to do, but again, a little further back. Alright, so we're going to cut through the wood first, obviously. Here we go. Don't put your face too close to it. So here's what you've just cut through. You just need to cut through the steel, that's all. Now we'll do the other side. You want to keep a good grip on this cutting tool because it does kind of want to like, you know, spin super fast, so if you're not prepared, it wants to kind of take off on you. See through the sparks, but we're really getting close to having a cut through. The reason we're cutting through with the uh, Dremel tool is because the uh, wood blade on the jigsaw is A, too rough, and B would probably not work. So we cut through it with the correct tool which is this. If you don't have a Dremel and you don't want to buy a Dremel, you can use a hacksaw with a metal blade on it. That works. It takes a lot longer, but it does work really good. Okay, so now we're going to cut out our tail. Are you ready for that? That's plugged in. I'm going to check my blade to make sure it's still got some tooth to it. Now, I don't know if you can see this if you zoom in on that baby, but this blade is a little charred. It's probably not as sharp as it used to be. Just to be uh, easy on the tool, 
and make my life easier for cutting things out. I'm going to put a fresh blade on here for this last step. Okay, now I'm ready to cut out my tail chain. And again, giving plenty of room here so that I don't go beyond the, the, um, the template that we've drawn on. Now, this notch part here is a pretty tight radius turn. The material is very hard and it's kind of thick, so you cannot make a very sharp turn. So. What I usually do is kind of a forward and backward, creating a channel through there. They can hear that I hit the uh, metal a little bit at the end of the cut, but that's okay. Okay, now the other side. Do a little clean up here. Et voila. Now that we have our shape cut out, we're going to use the belt sander and true up the edges, clean off all of the extra glue and everything that's on the edge. And uh, when we see the sparks starting to fly off of it, that means or where we want to be. This is another spot where it's real easy to heat up the edge too much and cause a delamination. So keep your belt sander moving. And another thing, in addition, is you always want to run on the bottom part of the belt sander, the platen here. You never want to. You don't want to lean forward or just dig in with just that part with the wheel because it'll make an indentation there. So keep it flat. Keep it flat on the platen here. And away we go. Okay, so now we've sanded down the edges. Our next move is going to be sanding down to the a line we drew on the nose, so shaping the whole nose and tail using the belt sander. So this is why we left our uh, left ourselves room to uh, kind of slowly take away material and really shape the board. Okay, so here's the part where we're going to work on beveling our edges. Uh, this is going to entail using the belt sander and running it parallel with the board along the edge. And we're basically just going to make it uh, taper back from the top of the stainless steel edge. And what that's going to do is uh, we're going to make a little sidewall and taper it back so it's at a five to 10 degree bevel away from that top edge. So from where we did our last step with the, with the sparks, that fun part, um, that squared up our edges. And now what we're going to do is bevel it back from the top of the edge, running the belt sander the same direction, just like we did on the other one. You know, a five, I'm sorry, a five to 10 degree bevel away from the top of the steel end. Now this is going to take a little bit of eyeballing, but you're getting good at that by now. 
Oh, as a tool, we can use this combination square as a uh, reference for getting everything nice and perfectly straight and beveled similar angle the whole way. We're gonna sand up to the widest point on the nose and the tail. That's the where I like to kind of terminate the bevel and then start tapering it back to basically to square. Up here on the nose, we're actually gonna taper the bevel back and make this actually a 90 degree angle around here. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the tail. You don't need to carry the bevel around the nose. It actually, I think it looks nicer when it's just a nice square 90 degree angle here, um, perpendicular to the face of the board. And then it will begin to fade into the bevel. Then we'll carry the bevel all the way back to the tail. And then the same thing, make it square and uh, perpendicular to the surface around the tail. So now that our bevel looks nice and consistent all the way around the board, we're going to bust out our handy rasp, also known as a sure form, or popularly known as a cheese grater because it's basically a cheese grater with a handle on it. And we will use this to finish shaping and fine tune the shape on the nose and the tail. So there's no steel here, so we can really get make the shape really exactly what we want it to do without worrying about running up against the predetermined edge like on the side walls. So this is going to be fine tuning with the rasp. You want to go along a little bit. This is a nice fine tuning. We're not trying to take out too much material. We're just trying to go back to the line that we had drawn earlier. Easing into it. Check it often to make sure it looks like it isn't, you're not taking out too much material. Just keep checking it. Uh, sometimes it's nice to, uh, because of the grain on the board, how it's not even, it throws off your eye as you're eyeballing it here. Um, kind of makes it tricky to see how the shape is coming out. So it's a good idea to flip it over and look at it from the back side where there is obviously no grain, it's just the P-Tex. It's a good way to check the symmetry and make sure things are coming out symmetrical. And we're gonna turn the board around and basically do the same thing at the tail end. Use your way back into it. A little uh, cheese grater work here. Next step is the Dremel tool. We're gonna change our bit from the cutting tool to a sanding tool. These things are handy for getting into the tight spaces like the notch on this tail. Um, you can see is not gonna be super easy spot to get our rasp into because it's, uh, it's all rounded and sort of a tight radius. Um, so the rasp doesn't work in there. And hand sanding is not that great for this consistent kind of notch shape. Light touch and keep it moving. It, you don't want to dig in in one spot, which it would do if you just leave it stationary with the wheel spinning, it'll make a big notch. So keep it moving, real light touch. Practice the move before you even put it in there, and then there we go. Okay, 
now we're up to now we're up to sanding. Uh, all we're doing now is uh, making the top smooth. If there's spots where the glue has uh, pushed through during the pressing, uh, this is a part where you can sand the glue off of the top, and you should be able to get a nice smooth surface here. So, and uh, <clears throat> you'll also be sanding off the lines that we drew on there earlier. So the technique is with a random orbital sander such as this, you put it on flat, don't start it and then drop it on. Always put it down, you don't need to push down at all. Just pull the trigger and let it go. And just keep it moving gently around the whole board. And uh, just make it smooth. Keep it nice and flat, don't dig in, just nice and flat. Send us pictures. I always like to see how they turn out. Uh, make sure you tune in to episode two for build your own snowboard, how to finish your snowboard.